rewind to 2016, um, I had been working at another company outside of Web3. And this was sort of like when Ethereum and all were popping off. And I remember at the time not really understanding it. Like I had heard of Bitcoin back in 2013, like there was that run up and people were freaking out about it. At the time, didn't understand Bitcoin, sort of lost interest. Uh, but in 2016, uh, the company I was working for, one of the people who was on my team, he was super into Ethereum. He had lost money in the DAO hack, but he was still super excited. And so as things were sort of heating up again, um, I was like trying to understand more about what was getting everyone else so excited. And since I was doing a lot of these like consulting flights between countries, um, I just was reading as many white papers, listening to as many talks, trying to like understand what was getting everyone else so excited. And I basically walked away with like two conclusions. Um, the first was that smart contracts were really interesting from a theoretical perspective. Like we've built this new primitive that we haven't really seen before. Um, but it was also clear to me that there weren't like super obvious use cases. A lot of the things that were sort of being pitched during the ICO era that might have sounded kind of good on paper or very speculative on paper, but like it didn't really resonate with me as much as like the core smart contract idea. So it was like, cool, we've built something unique, not super obvious what the use cases are. Um, but in that time in doing that research, I came across a talk that Juan, who's the founder of Protocol Labs, a talk that he gave about IPFS. Now, the company I was working for was doing a lot in distributed systems. So the way that they built software, it was meant to be deployed for people who are in super remote regions, things disconnected from the internet. And reading the IPFS white paper, it instantly clicked in terms of like what IPFS might mean for the internet at large, where instead of saying like, hey, we're going to make the internet depend on these centralized links, uh, where if you lose connectivity to a specific server or someone blocks your access, you no longer can access content. Instead, we can build the internet to have sort of these resiliency properties just by leaning in to sort of like the distributed nature that it has inherently. And that sort of stuck with me. And it was like outside of Ethereum at the time, like the only other thing I was really tracking was like the IPFS, like Filecoin sort of story. And then I guess like between 2016 and 2019, it was something that like every now and again, I would check in on uh, and like just see what was going on. Um, but then in the middle of 2019, I'd been at my last job for about four and a half years at that point. And so it was just a moment of, I've been there for a while. Is it really the place that I want to be long term? Or are there other sort of like big things that I think are worth working on? Um, so that interest in protocol labs slash IPFS, that was sort of there. So that was like one of the three things I was looking at. So I had a bucket of like Web3 and protocol labs, honestly, was the only thing in that bucket for me. Um, uh, there was alternative energy. So looking at like renewable sources of energy, I was looking at like lithium sulfur batteries is one thing. Um, and then vertical farming was like the other sort of like big bet. And so for each of these, it was like in the next 10 years, what do I think are things that are going to matter? And like, uh, yeah, after talking to the different teams, I just really clicked with the people I met at Protocol Labs. Like two of my four interviews ended up being philosophical debates about like, what does it mean to build an uncensorable web? Like, is that actually a thing that we want to like manifest into the world? And like, what are the real properties that you want if you're trying to build something that can like better encode civil liberties into like the software stack? Um, so to me, that was like, sort of like how I knew it was like, this is the place I want to go. Um, and I've been here ever since. Um, so yeah, at Protocol Labs, I've gotten to work on basically all parts of Filecoin. Um, so I started out as a research PM working on Filecoin's proofs. Um, so this was before Filecoin launched. Um, I switched gears and helped launch a number of products, which were like storage on ramps. Uh, so NFT storage and Web3 storage, I was like the founding PM for both of those products. Um, then after that, uh, started working on like collaboration things, just helping people onboard into the ecosystem. So like OpenSea, Rarible, Magic Eda, and different people who were trying to build things during like the bull run. Um, and then I'm sure we'll talk about this later. Um, me and my colleague HQ, we started a team called TLDR, which was just taking a step back to try to like better synthesize what's going on in the Filecoin like ecosystem. So that people who are coming up for the first time, trying to understand how to like navigate the ecosystem, what are sort of like the big bets that the ecosystem is making, like we can distill that because Filecoin is a very technical project and it's really hard to track from the outside.